common mistakes and ways to correct them. One of the most common mistakes that people new to LGDs make is they get two puppies at once. And this is a problem because there's something called littermate syndrome and it actually applies whether or not the dogs are littermates or not. The issue is that you have two puppies of the same age, especially if they're the same gender. And the reason this is a common mistake is that people mostly believe they should have at least two guardian dogs. And while that's true, what you really need is a pair of dogs that are of different ages. Having two puppies at once quadruples the labor. You have to work a lot harder to prevent problem behaviors because as soon as one puppy does it, the other puppy does it. So you have to separate them a lot more. You have to have two separate kennel runs. You have to have two separate tethering systems. You may even have to keep them in two separate pastures. And you have to minimize how much time they spend together. The other problem that can occur is that because they're the same age, it's much harder for them to work out a hierarchy and you tend to get really nasty fights at adolescence and early adulthood, especially if they're the two females. So it's really harder for two dogs that are exactly the same age to work out who's in charge and it creates conflict. Another concern that people make when they buy a new puppy is they get something that's mixed with a non-LGD breed or isn't an LGD breed at all. This doesn't work out well because a lot of the behaviors that we need for our LGDs to engage in are instinctive behaviors. That means they're behaviors they're born with. So they're genetic. And they can't be trained into a dog who doesn't already possess them. So if you cross something like a Great Pyrenees and a Border Collie, for example, you've taken that low prey drive peer and put it with that high prey drive Border Collie, and now you have a dog that's going to have a stronger tendency to chase. And this is something we don't want our guardian dogs doing. And it's very difficult to train a dog that is hardwired to chase like a Border Collie to not chase. So you put that together and you end up with a dog who can't perform the task. Another issue is that that cross can dilute the guarding instinct. And that's a problem because guarding behavior in dogs is, is fear-based. And guardian breeds, livestock guardian breeds, have been bred to handle that fear-based defense drive without actually experiencing fear. So they don't flee from danger, they stand and fight. You cross that with something else and you don't have that tendency to stand their ground and you end up with a dog who runs away instead of defending. They may still bark and they may act big and tough, but they won't actually bring the pain when the time comes. They'll flee because they'll be defending themselves. So in these situations, if you bring, if you bring home two puppies or you find out that your puppy is crossed with something that isn't going to work out as an LGD, there's some options. One of them is to simply rehome the other the, the dog. You can rehome the second puppy, rehome the non-LGD mix. Um, a lot of times you'll find other people in the farming community looking for an LGD puppy so they can take your second puppy for you. Or the non-LGD mixes some, sometimes make really great pets or general farm dogs, so you can rehome them to somebody who's looking for that. Or you can return them to the breeder. If you got them from a good breeder, this should be your first option because good breeders will always take their puppies back. You don't always have this option because there's not a lot of great breeders out there doing crosses, but if you have a good breeder, they will take the puppy back. If you have no choice and you have to keep both puppies or you really want to give it a try, remember it's very important to separate them. They will need to be kept in their own separate pens, ideally where they can't see each other. They can be given time together to play and interact, but they shouldn't live together. If you end up having to keep the non-LGD breed, the thing to remember is that it probably will not succeed as a working livestock guardian dog. So you'll want to be working on training it to be a general farm guardian and teaching it to sleep by the house and not expecting it necessarily to learn to live alone with the livestock without supervision. Now as far as how soon to put your new puppy with stock, the puppy should be introduced to stock immediately. It's very important that they have this, this exposure during the socialization period where they're learning who their social group is. Ideally, you will have acquired a puppy from a breeder who's already doing this, so it's just a matter of them being introduced to your stock. But you need to make sure that you pick stock carefully. For example, don't bring a new dog in to livestock who've never had a guardian dog during the breeding season. You're gonna end up with a puppy getting bullied by your mama ewes or your mama does because they think this puppy is a predator and they're gonna be dangerous. They end up butting the puppy and bullying him and he grows up afraid of the stock and he will often become defensive. And this can be a problem because a goat can't really defend itself against a defensive dog. So you wanna put them with calm stock that are confident around dogs but that also won't take any nonsense. They won't run from the puppy if he tries to chase, but they also won't like beat him in the dirt either. As they get older, you know, when you hit about 
six, five to six months is when this tends to start turning on. Your puppy will start requiring a lot more supervision, especially if you do not already have an adult dog out there with him. And this is the age when adolescent behaviors begin kicking in and they will start to dip, you know, they'll start to play, they'll start to chase, they may start getting mouthy with the stock, they may start bullying a little bit. This does not mean your dog is ruined, but it does mean he needs some intervention. Um, the first thing to do is to simply make sure he can't engage in these problem behaviors. Tethering and pinning are the two most common ways to do this. You catch the puppy in the act and he gets put in timeout. You put the puppy on a tether and he tries to chase so his friends leave and he's stuck there by himself because he can't follow them. And then we also go into more detail later on, but there's also some various training collars you can try and one of them is called a dangle and dangles also help to prevent chasing. If you have an adult dog who will correct him for this behavior, that's great, but a lot of times even if you have an adult dog, they won't. So you do have to be prepared to step in and correct that behavior. So be prepared when your puppy begins approaching adolescence that he may end up spending less time with the stock than he has been because he can't be trusted until he learns his manners. One thing you don't need to bother with is perimeter walks. Perimeter walks are not necessary. I'm not actually sure where this came from, why people think this is a thing they need to do, but dogs do not need to be taught where the fence line is. The fence line will teach the dog where the fence line is. What you do instead is just make sure the fence line is a psychologically impenetrable barrier. Exposing puppies to an electric fence early actually helps with this because they learn early on that the fence bites and they will simply avoid it and then later on your fencing doesn't have to be as secure. So as long as they encounter the fence on their own and discover that they can't pass it, they will learn where their boundary is themselves. You don't have to walk around with them to show them where the fence line is. You also want to make sure that your fencing is really solid. If you've got goats, you're probably already doing this, but other stock aren't quite as hard on fences. Hot wire is your friend. Um, typically woven wire fencing is sturdier than welded wire. Most people get away pretty well with four foot woven wire goat fencing with a hot wire across the top, maybe two across the top, and maybe one across the bottom if you have a digger. I often recommend that the top wire be inset about five to six inches as well so that it's sort of inside the fence and on top of it. Now one of the myths you'll hear about how to correct inappropriate livestock behavior, if you have a puppy who chases chickens, for example, if they kill a chicken, you should tie it around their neck. This doesn't work. Um, it's kind of like giving a kid a candy necklace. Dogs like rotting corpses. They think rotting corpses are awesome. They like to roll on them. They like to chew on them. And dogs don't necessarily make a connection between this dead chicken hanging on their neck and that thing, they, that fun thing they were chasing around yesterday. So. The, the chicken around the neck routine simply doesn't work. There's lots of other ways, and we'll address them in a later video, to teach puppies how to be safe with poultry, but tying the chicken around the neck is just kind of a waste of effort, plus it's kind of icky. So yeah, I don't particularly want my dog to have a rotting corpse attached to it for days on end. So those are some things, just some mistakes that people tend to make that we want to try to avoid, but if you do, how to troubleshoot them. And we will be going into more detail with some of this information at a later time. Have a good one. Bye.